OK, this is the uh, sequential circuit uh, implementation in Verilog. And basically our attention in this lecture will be focused on the implementation of this block where we have uh, implementation of uh, sequential circuit. And typically sequential circuits means flip flops or latches, but the main focus will be flip flops. This is how we implement a, a flip flop um, uh, in, uh, in, in Verilog. Okay, let me see if I have. This is this is how we implement uh, flip flop and Verilog. Um, so uh, the, the, the the let's let's take a look here at the okay uh, at this uh, at this side of the implementation. Um, the main thing here that we want to highlight is the following. As you know, the flip flop uh, D flip flop has an input D and an output Q and the clock. OK, so you see this implementation here is exactly right at this always block, always at positive edge of the clock. What do we do? The output Q gets the, uh, the, 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 the input D. Watch the use of non-blocking assignment. That's how we use sequential circuit. We use non-blocking assignment inside always block. Also, Watch how this uh, Q here is defined as register, an output, and it's also register. If, if we don't have this word register, the default of the output will be a wire, and you cannot assign a wire inside an always block. So you have to have this one. So if it is an output, you, you say output register Q. If it is in turn a node, you say register Q. OK, so this is the implementation. This implementation here implements a flip flop on neg edge of the clock, but, 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 but most of the time flip flops are positive edge. Now we can add here um, a synchronous reset. OK, so this input here, whenever it arrives, we set the output of the flip flop to zero. So whenever uh, reset, so we use the same implementation here with a slight modification. What's the modification? We check for the change on the clock for the positive edge and uh, uh, I'm sorry, or so this is this comma here means or by the way, either this or or positive edge on reset. Now, then I use an F statement here and I and here we say that if if reset is one, then set the, the output of the flip flop to zero. Otherwise, otherwise, if if it if if this is not the case, it means we don't have a reset signal. We are we are we have really a positive edge of the clock. And what we have here, we set the output to the input. Okay. So this is with asynchronous uh, uh, reset. Now we can do synchronous reset. And it's the same implementation, except we don't have the checking on the sensitivity list of the reset. This reset is not here. And, and, and that means that I only check the value of reset when I when 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 uh, a positive edge of the clock. So if, if I don't, then this is asynchronous. It means I will set my flop whenever the pause edge of the clock arrives. But here I will set the re, uh, the, uh, the um okay let's let's uh, back again i will set q right here to 0 only when positive edge of the clock arrives but here i will set the q to 0 uh, at either the positive edge of the clock or the positive edge of reset that's why it's asynchronous reset now I can have a flip flop with a synchronous reset, a synchronous reset. By the way, when we say reset uh, without qualifying it with set or reset, uh, without qualifying it with asynchronous or asynchronous, the default is asynchronous reset. OK, so here we have uh, with enable. It means that I will check the enable to update the, 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 the output. OK, so the same implementation here with the except that I will, before assign the Q with an input value, I will check with an enable here. So I, this enable is an input for me. So if the enable is activated, 
I will change the output of the flip flop. OK. Now we can get uh, somewhat uh, uh, fancy here and uh, we can implement T flip flop using the D flip flop that I learned. And, and from your digital class, you understand that this is the implementation of a T flip flop. So I can implement the T flip flop right here structurally using a D flip flop and a, a inverter. OK. And from the T flip flop, I can I can implement a counter again. This is from your logic class. This is a four bit counter, so I can instantiate T flip flops, four bit T flip flops. OK, all right. So uh, the inputs uh, will be the the uh, uh, clock, the reset and the output will be the, the output of the counter. OK, and the, the the most important usage really of the uh, sequential circuits is uh, in implementation of finite state machine. OK, so so what do I do in finite state machine? Finite state machine, uh, if you if you recall in digital class, um, you implement uh, a, a somewhat uh, a, a sequential circuit uh, for doing simple control. And typically it consists of um, uh, a, a, a next state and this uh, current state and the output. OK, so. In in uh, uh, in in uh, we'll, we'll see an example of that of a state machine, but in the implementation of Verilog, it's important to understand these main three blocks, the, the, the state, the current state right now, which is implemented in flip flops. The next state, which is implemented combinationally, and the output function, which is, I, I think, which is also a, a combinational circuit. The only sequential part here is the current state, okay, which is implemented in flip flop. Here is a state machine that we would like, we would want to implement. So, whatever this state machine does, it has this input, right? And um, um, this input here. Uh, uh, based on its value, I'm going to transition between those states. I don't care what this state does. What I care is that I want to implement this state machine in Verilog. The very first thing you notice that I do here is define a parameter for the state value. So since I have three states here, I understand that I need two flip flops to implement them. OK, so I define here register one to zero, two bits state and next state. OK, this is like my Q and QN and QN plus one. OK, so uh, uh, the similar similar to the notation. So the state is QN and the QN plus one is the next state. So I will define these values for for uh, for 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 the states for a value of a two bit zero zero is a state zero. And two bit of zero one is a state one, and two bit of one zero is a state two. Okay, all right. So these parameters, I will use these names S uh, zero and S one and S two in my implementation. Okay. Now you can see here I have implemented this flip flop, right? Using two, using uh, using uh, two always block. This always block, right? And this always block, all right? OK, so this always block implements what? It implements this uh, uh, st uh, current state. And it says that, so we have uh, th uh, th that that the state, um, if, if, if I have a reset, if I have a reset, right? And then uh, this is this is by the way uh, uh, low active reset, so that's why we say neg edge negative edge. Uh, if the reset uh, underscore n equals zero, then the state is in is 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 sent back to state zero. This is the reset when I reset the state machine. Otherwise, the state will be assigned the next state. Okay, now we will see what's this next state in this block. So the next state is coming from here. All right. OK, so 
this is the always block. The second always block is what determine the next state, okay, which is which is basically this block here. And we say that, okay, um, uh, we case the state, which is the current state. It's going to be either S0 or S1 or S2. If I am in S0, right, then um, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the the Q, by the way, is the output. Okay, so so my output is is zero as I uh, the problem state, and then if the input equals one, then my next the state is S one. My next state is S one. Okay, if the input is otherwise, the next state is zero. Otherwise, I will stay where I am. Okay, so I'm basically reading the the state diagram. If I am in S1, then the output Q is zero. The output Q is zero. Watch this. This is the output. And if I have an input one, then my next state is S2. My next state is S2. All right. If I have an S0, uh, uh, the, uh, the input is zero. I'll go back to S0. So I'm going to go back to S0. Okay, that's so I'm implementing the state machine basically uh, to evaluate the next state. All right, so here uh, it's important to notice the difference. In, 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 uh, in, in the upper part, I will assign values to the state. In the lower part, I'm going to assign values to the next state and the output, okay? All right, so basically I am lumping this, this part here and this part here, okay, in, in, in this uh, always block. That's one way to implement Verilog, and this is the preferred way. Some people, what they do is they merge this always block with this always block, okay? And they make it one always block, which is which is what is being done here, okay? And you can you can check it check it them check it yourself. Uh, if reset, then the state equal this, and otherwise, so you you really don't need the next state variable here. You directly uh, assigned to the state. I find this is confusing, okay? But some people prefer this this coding style. I don't. So you can implement the state machine with two always blocks or one always block. It's it's up to you. Well, basically, at the end, we are we are implementing this this uh, this state machine. Again, if we if we follow up here, if if reset is zero then state goes to the to, to the initial state uh, now if reset uh, uh, otherwise i'm going to go through a case statement we check if i'm state s0 right if enable is one then the state will go directly to s1 so the state will go directly to s1 this is the one and uh, and the output is assigned to to zero much like we have we see here okay all right the output is zero and otherwise, if the input is is uh, is is zero, then I'm gonna go to S zero, and the output is zero. Okay, so this is how I imp implement the S zero, and I can implement S one and S two the same way as well. Okay, so the important thing when you implement the 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 finite state machine is that to you construct the you construct the um the state diagram correctly, okay? And then uh, 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 if you use this uh, this two always blocks, then you have to use two variables, one for the state and the other one for the next state. I prefer this coding style. Okay, it's a lot easier, a lot simpler. And, and, and then just, you know, just kind of read the state diagram and put it into statements as I have done. The other thing important you have to remember that this is combinational block, okay? So here, this is a combinational block, okay? And this is a sequential block. What, what does it mean? Watch this assignment state. Sequential use, none blocking, okay? Combinational use, blocking assignments, blocking assignments, okay? So this is one thing to remember. All right, so this, concludes the implementation of a state machine in Verilog. I'm going to uh, uh, stop the recording right now. Okay.